right, so we're at day four. We got absolute value equations. So yesterday we did absolute value graphs, which were good. You know, it's just graphing what happens. Um, you know, if you have an absolute value with some shifts, some, you know, some slides, some flips. Now today, instead of it, you know, an absolute value equaling y, we're going to have it equal a number, which means you can solve for it. But there's a question here that says, is there absolutely one answer? Okay, so when we're doing these, we got to think, is there just one answer to look for? Or is there possibly a second answer? Is there, you know, what, what else do we need to do? So in the last lesson, we learned um, about the absolute value function. But how can, you, how, or how can you solve an absolute value function? Well, one way to do it is you can you can graph it. So you can you can solve an absolute. You can graph it and look for um, x intercepts. Look for x intercepts. If you have a set equal to zero, or you could graph the two functions individually, which we're going to do down here, and you can, you can look for where they intersect. So we can say for intercepts or for intercepts, Inter, for intersection. So it's kind of two ways we're going to do this. So we're going to show you how to do it graphically, and then on the back, you know, as we get to the stage, we're going to talk about how to do it algebraically. So if you know both ways, it's great. It's going to help out. Um, what does the absolute value function do? From yesterday, it gives the distance from zero. So when you do the absolute value sum, it is how far from zero is that number? So the absolute value of six. What is the absolute value of six? Six. Yeah, because six is six units from zero. What's the absolute value of zero? Zero, right? Because zero is no units from zero. How about the absolute value of negative six? Six. So that's just how to do the operation itself. Now, what if what if there's a variable inside there? Like, what if we said the absolute value of something is two? And it might help to look at a number line if you're having trouble with this. It just says here's zero. I'm looking for numbers that are two units away. So if I go two units to the right, well, that would be one solution. So x equals two, whoops, two. Or what if I want two units to the left instead? I'm at negative two. So if you want to bounce to the right or to the left, that means either one of these is a distance from, from zero of two. So the question up here says, is there absolutely one answer? Well, no, we just found there's two answers sometimes. Now, the absolute, absolute value of number equals zero. Yeah, there's only one answer to that, just zero. So it's possible to have two answers. It's possible to have one answer. What about this last one? What number has a distance from zero of negative two? There's no answer. There's no answer, right? You can't have a distance of negative. Negative or distance is not signed. Well, it's just positive. How many units away are you is always a positive. So this one is no solution. So that's also an option. We can have solutions, we can have one solution, or we have no solutions. That's a possibility. So one way to solve this is by graphing. And this is helpful if you have a graph available or if you have technology available, you can use this. Um, but it's not, not the primary way we want you to solve it. But So from yesterday, we, we hopefully can remember how to do this. It says graph uh, y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. Now what does that plus 1 do to the graph? What direction? Not left. That's if it's inside with the x. Oh, up. This one's up. Yep, that, this one's up. So this one is going to be up one unit. So up one unit. And just if I had regular old absolute value, it would be a V shape that hits the origin. So if I move that up one unit, just move your vertex up one unit. And now it's going to have a slope of 1 on the right side and a slope of negative 1 on the left side. So there's my graph, and I can do I'll try to do different colors here and see if it now. It says draw a horizontal line on the graph to create a sum that would give us two equations. So I wanted I want to draw a line, a horizontal line that would hit that graph at two places. Now, is there just one right answer? Oh, there's a, there's a lots of, of ways to draw a horizontal line twice. Anybody have a one they want to use? I feel like the graph it almost the grid almost is like darker at five. So it kind of sticks to me. If I go at y equals 5 right here, if I draw a horizontal line right here, that's going to hit it twice. So if I do y equals 5, 
So if I, if I took the absolute value of x plus 1 and set it equal to 5, I'd have two solutions because those two graphs touch each other twice. Okay. Now what if it says draw a horizontal line that would create one solution? There's only one answer for this. So where would the line have to be to have one solution? Wait. Oh, yeah. y equals 1, yep. So if I draw a line y equals 1, that's going to hit it at one place. So just one solution right there. And then if I try to find another color here, I need to draw a horizontal line that would have no solutions, which means they never intersect each other. You can pick about anywhere. I'm just going to pick negative 2. So anywhere below 1 would work. So y equals 2. So on this, this first one here, what are the x values where they meet? So right here they meet and right here they meet. What are those x values? Yeah, negative 4 and 4. So these yield x equals negative 4 and 4. So if I set absolute value of x plus 1 equal to the 5, I get negative 4 and 4. Now on this one here, I, I need to get the absolute value by itself to solve this. If I'm Because I want to get here so I can look at solve it like this, like we did above. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get the absolute value of x equals 4. Is it true that negative 4 and 4 is the trick? Yeah. So here's graphically. Here's how to algebraically do it. And then part B, if I set x, the absolute value of x plus 1 equal to 1. Now if I look at that graph, what's the x value that makes that true? What is the x value where they meet there? 0. So when x is 0, they meet. Well, if I go to solve this guy, subtract 1 from both sides, I get the absolute value of x equals 0. Well, there's only one answer, 0. And over here, if I try to do this guy, we already know that x doesn't equal anything, no solution. So there is no x value. Really, I put x equals no solution. I should have said no solution. There's no solution to it because if I go like this and I take the absolute value of x plus 1 and I set that equal to 2, I'm sorry, negative 2. I didn't catch myself. I made a mistake. Did everybody see that? <laughs> so this one down here should be negative 2. I think I may have said negative 2, but I wrote positive 2. So negative 2, if I go to solve this guy, subtract 1, subtract 1, this says the absolute value of x equals negative 3. Is that possible? I can't have an absolute value of negative. That's why there's no solution. Okay. Now this guy, instead of them giving us options, they're saying graph these two and see where they meet. So I'm trying to solve, you know, when does the absolute value of x minus 3 equal? That's my goal. So basically this equation right here is what I'm trying to do. So if I graph them, graph them individually, and if they do intersect, they have a solution. And the x-coordinates where they intersect is our answer. So let's try this first. I'm on a free screen. Graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. See if you remember what to do with that. Kind of sketchy on it, draw it lightly. But try to remember, if, if you, you can also split your notes over. It's on the these notes if you want to try to remember what is having a minus 3 inside If you got a, a x minus three, so the minus three is inside the absolute value, that means it's going to shift it left and right. Like that affects us, it affects the x's. If that helps you think of it that way, like when it's with the x, it's on the x-axis. It's going to be the movement on the x-axis. If it's outside, it's with the y's. So if it's with the x, it's left and right. It is the absolute. So minus three, I would think it's to the left, but it's actually to the right. Graph that. The, I, I did blue and red. Do the blue graph up there, it should be three steps to the right, and it's the absolute value V shape with a slope of one on both sides because there is no number out front. If there was some number out front, that would change the slope. But if there's no number, that means it's a one. So it's a slope of one, one and negative one. So what are the solutions on this one? Like what? 
what I'm looking for is right there, there's an intersection and an intersection. What x values? Where are the x values where they meet? If you don't want to say it, at least write it down. If you haven't already, write it down. Because it looks like what? At one, when x is one, they meet. And when x is five, we don't write the values because they're the same. They're two on that one. So x is one, they both have a y value of two. And when x is five, they both have a y value of two. That means they each other at that point. How many solutions are there? There's two. How can I tell? There were two intersections. So there are two times where they met each other. Okay. Now that, that's graphically solving it. I don't want to do that every time. I don't want to have to graph it. Now it is a tool I can use, but I'd like to do it faster. So I want to be able to do it algebraically and be done with it and not have to worry about did I graph that right or oh I need graph paper and I got to do it you know, cleanly and correctly. And so how we do this algebraically, first off, make sure the absolute value is by itself. It's like an A, the absolute value is by itself. There's nothing else outside the absolute value. In part B, it's not by itself. So I have to do some work first. Like I have to subtract the 4 over and then divide by negative 2 to get 5 and divide by 2 to get the absolute value by itself. Once you do that, it's kind of like we did on the front side. When we talked about up here, when we did this guy, we said that x equals the positive and it equals the negative of the right side. So this x right here is equal to the positive of a and it's going to equal the opposite of a. Just say or it'll equal that. So those are two options. And then our third step eventually on the back side is to check for extraneous solutions. Sometimes whenever you create these two new equations, they're meant to be equivalent equations, but sometimes those equivalent equations have extra solutions that we don't want, that didn't work with the original equation. So on this one, whatever is in the absolute value, it must have equaled either 6 or equal negative 6, because when I absolute valued it, I got 6. So 15 minus 3x, it either equaled 6 or it equaled negative 6. So now I have kind of stinks, kind of a trick it seems like, but because you know, we told you here you got one question to do, actually you have two questions to do, you have two questions to solve. So I have to solve both those equations to find the two answers. So go ahead and solve both of those, get x, y, and by themselves in both of those. I got, I got three and seven. Again, there one thing just to make sure we do want to check because this is one of those functions that we could get extra solutions. I need to plug three in and make sure it's right. And you can do it on the calculator if you want. Like the calculator has an absolute value function or a value. It's not a button. <laughs> which is, it's in a menu in there. But if I want to to check this, I need to take the absolute value of fifteen minus three times three. So to find the absolute value, it's the math button. Below in alpha it says math. I push math. And then go over to the number menu. It says ABS. That's absolute value. If I hit enter, some calculators will still say yes. If it's an older calculator, if it's a new, it'll have the absolute value symbols there. But the absolute value of 15 minus 3 times, and in this case, I want to plug 3 in. So does this equal 6? Yes. Now I want to plug 7 in. Now you can retype the whole thing, but your calculator does have a copy and paste kind of like thing. If I want to re enter the exact same thing, but on the newer calculators, you can just scroll up and hit enter. See how it's kind of bluish and it's highlighted, you can hit enter. Or if you have an older calculator, you have to push right above the enter, it says entry in blue. If you push second entry, it's going to copy your last three. You can edit it. So let's change it to a seven. It's also a six. So these both work. I can keep them. Both solutions. Perfect. Okay. Now this guy, 
Again, get the absolute value by itself. Step one, get the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to subtract 4. And then I'm going to divide by negative 2. I do get, I get the absolute value by itself. Oops, somewhere along the way I lost my plus, sorry. So now the absolute value of an expression equal 10, that means it actually equals 10 or negative 10. So I'm going to have x plus 9 equal to 10. Or x plus 9 equals negative 10. And then solve those two equations. If I want to check those real quick, plug them back in, and I can tell you, I already checked them, they both work. So if you want to save some time, they, they both work. We don't need to spend all that time, but just plug them back in and see if it actually equals negative 16, and they both do. Okay, so try letter D. Try this guy out. Let's see if you can get the two answers. So if you've got some of the way into it, you just want to check yourself. I got kind of the first half of the problem up there. Take one way to fix it before you do the rest of it. That's what is it? I don't want you to do the whole problem. You may say, okay. So if it equals, like this one here, if it equals 14, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So 3x equals 15, and then divide by 3. And then on the right one, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So this would be a negative 13. Save you some time, they both work, so we don't need to go through and check them all. But, yep. All right, unfortunately, today's notes does have a third page, but I'll try to get this a little quicker. I want to make sure you get some work done. <clears throat> and now it's just kind of talking about some, some little things that might happen that can help you. You know, I can realize, oh, I don't have to go any further. It's so like this problem right here. It says, does this equation have a solution? So if I were to go to try to split it into two equations, what would I split it into? Because it says that the distance from zero is negative 10. Can I have a negative distance? No, we can't. So anytime you have an absolute value equals a negative, you can stop right there and say, this doesn't have a solution. There's no solution. So no absolute value must be positive. So if you got to this point in the equation, you can stop and say, no solution. Can't happen. Okay, so the, the recording, well, again, one of those where um, it stops, uh, stops recording the, my disk was full, so I had to delete some video. But uh, we left off in this area. Um, so the extraneous solutions, just to talk a little further with this, um, when you find them, you know, like this one here, I set this equal to 4x, to negative 4x. And uh, when you solve them, you get 6 and negative 2. Well, when I plug 6 back in up here, so I plug in, da, 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 check it, you get 24 equals 24. But when I plug negative 2 in, just even on this side, when I plug negative 2 in times 4, it's negative 8. That's not, like, absolute value can't be a negative. So right off the bat, I can say that's a no. So one thing to know about is if there's an expression with a variable on the other side, then that means you could have an absolute, or you could have an extraneous solution. So you got to keep a heads up for the, if there is a variable on the other side, that's a possibility. So I'm just going to put these down here so you can see them. Um, since, you know, I can't, don't want to make the video too long, but if you want to walk through these, like this expression equals 4x plus 1, or it equals negative 4x minus 1, because that's what you get when you negate both of those. Solve them like usual. When I plug 1 in, it's fine, because 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. When I plug in 1 here, I get 5. So that is fine. It's this guy. When I get this negative 3 sevenths, if I take that times 4 and add 1, I get a negative. You can't have absolute value with a negative, so you got to throw it out. This one over here, it worked out okay. Um, whenever you set it equal to x plus 4 and negative x minus 4, and you solve it, you get two answers that when you plug it in, they work fine. Um, the last one at the bottom here, 
Um, so you have one solution, two solutions, or you could have no solutions. And this is one where I divided both sides by 5 to get rid of that. Get rid of that 5. And then I split the positive, and I split the negative. The opposite would be negative 3x plus 7. If I solve them, I got two solutions. I got negative 1 half, and I got 13 eighths. Both of them make that not true. So there would be no solution on that one. Um, so just that the finishing touches on those that, that I didn't get in my, my video, my, my original recording that I have to add to it now, uh, are those, those three. So hopefully that helps, and um, good luck with your, with your assignment.